The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Dominion Church of God. Stay tuned for today's message. rising sun father there are some lord that have not seen the rising sun lord but i thank you for the rising sun lord i thank you lord for waking us up this morning i thank you lord that we are in our right minds lord god i thank you lord that we have a mouth to worship lord i thank you lord for the opportunity that we have lord to worship you in the airwaves lord god freely god almighty on social media freely god we can worship the king of kings and we can glorify the lord of lord lord i worship you jesus hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god you are awesome and there is none like unto you god hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus today how about worshiping god how about glorifying the king of kings and the lord of lords hallelujah hallelujah he said he inhabits the praise of the people hallelujah hallelujah glory be to your name lord hallelujah hallelujah i want to join with the psalmist and say i will make a joyful noise i will make a happy noise i will make some noise unto the lord hallelujah hallelujah yes lord oh my soul my soul will worship and my soul will glorify as i make a joyful noise lord jesus i I command my spirit to worship. I command my spirit to worship and I will serve the Lord with gladness, not with a heavy heart, but I will serve him with gladness. Oh God Almighty, because I know how much the Lord has done for me lord i will serve you i will worship you jesus oh god when you give me the opportunity to worship i want to worship you lord i want to glorify you lord with my spirit i worship the lord oh my soul and everything that is within me will bless his holy name oh god the psalmist said know ye that that the Lord he is God Lord we worship you because you are God father you created us father you created us to worship and to glorify you God father so we worship and we glorify you Lord father God so we Lord God counteract Lord every tired spirit we counteract oh God every weary spirit oh god almighty father and we seize this moment we seize this opportunity to worship the creator lord god the divine creator lord the creator of our lives the lord of our lives hallelujah hallelujah 
Oh God, I will enter. I will enter in his gates with thanksgiving. Oh God, it might not be the physical temple, but spiritually, Lord, I go into worship. Oh God, I go into your presence to glorify you, Lord God. And to worship you with all our hearts and with all our spirit. Oh God, we worship you and we, we worship you in, with a thankful heart. Lord God, a grateful heart. Lord God, because we know you are good. Lord God, because no good thing will you withhold. Oh God, from us God. Lord, if we seek you and we worship you, Lord, with an upright heart. Oh God, we know you are good Lord. Lord, we have proven how much you have been good to us. Lord, you have been good Lord. Father, times may be bad, but you have been good. We may have received bad news, but you have been good. We may be upon a mountain, you are good. Oh God, whatever the situation, you are a good God. You are a mercy Merciful God, oh God, we worship you and we glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are good every time, Lord God, and your mercy, Lord, your mercy endures. Oh God, throughout all generations, your mercy is everlasting. Oh God Almighty, oh God, your mercy just go on and on and on. Oh God, we don't have to work and work and work to achieve it. Oh God, but because of your grace, oh God, and your mercy, oh God, I thank you, Lord, that it is free. All you need, Lord, is a willing heart, a willing heart to worship and to glorify you, Jesus. Oh God Almighty, your mercies is everlasting and your truth endures. Oh God, and we embrace your truth, Lord. We embrace your word, your truth enduring to all generation. Oh God Almighty, and thank you, Lord. We speak the word, the truth over our generation. We speak the truth, Lord God, the word of God. Over our children, over our children's children, oh God, speak the word over them, and they shall come to know you, who is God, oh Lord, they shall come to surrender their lives to you, God, I thank you, I thank you, Lord Jesus, I glorify you, God, and I lift you up, Oh God, I lift you up, I lift you up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are at the start of a new week. Have you gotten the chance? to just worship. How about starting out this week? Just worshiping and glorifying and thanking God. Oh God, don't wait till the battle is over. But start now and begin to worship and begin to glorify his name. Hallelujah. So God, I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord. Oh God, for worship, for this worship service. I thank you, Lord, for the lives that you're going to touch. I thank you, Lord, for the word that you're going to bring forth in song and bring forth God by your man servant. Oh God, I worship and I glorify you. I give you all the praise, Lord. I give you all the glory, Jesus, and we lift you up. Oh God, as we continue to worship, oh God, in different forms throughout this service, we give you all the praise as we commit ourselves to you, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit lead and direct God as we say thank you, Lord. Oh God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, as you use us to your glory and to your will, Lord God, we say thanks in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful day that the Lord hath made. And aren't you happy to be in the house of God, to worship 
and to glorify God. I always see, I will always say, when we get an opportunity to come into the house of God, let us not take it lightly. So let me invite you, hallelujah, if you're doing any activities around your home, just take a minute, a pause. Oh God, and let's worship and glorify the King of Kings because he has been so good. He has been so wonderful. Welcome to Kingdom Dominion Church of God. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship as we glorify God. Your breakthrough might be in your worship. The answer to your prayers might be in your worship. Your worship could break through those walls. Hallelujah. And give you the answer that you have been waiting on. Hallelujah. Your blessing might be held up in your submission of your spirit to Christ and to worship him and to glorify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. It's going to might be a busy week for some of us. And I know after today it's going to get so busy. But today we worship. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But today we have the opportunity to worship. Today we will worship. Today we will glorify God. Today we will come into his presence and allow him to speak to us and to speak through us. Hallelujah. As we fill our cups, hallelujah, I invite you to turn up your cups, hallelujah, as we feast, oh God, on the word of God and on his presence, on the anointing of God, hallelujah, glory be to God, just continue to worship, just continue to worship the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God, glory be to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, right where you are in your homes, just lift your hands and just begin to say hallelujah Jesus, hallelujah, 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 you are awesome, you are awesome, you are awesome, you are awesome almighty God. You are awesome. You are awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to ask Sister Angela, could you please uh, just continue to pray? Hallelujah. As we worship God, Minister Angelo. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We thank you, Abba Father. We glorify you. We tell you thanks. You are the God of our salvation. Rejoice. This is a morning of rejoicing. You have given us the gift of life. Hallelujah. Lord God, when nothing else could do anything for us, yes, you woke us up this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Not only did you wake us up, Lord, but we are in our right minds. Mm -hmm. Our hands, we were able to use our hands, God Almighty, to go to the bathroom. Yes, Put on our clothes, hallelujah. Yes, Brush our God. teeth. Hallelujah. You gave us eyes, God, that we could see what clothes to wear. Yes, what Lord. had to put on to brush our teeth. Oh, God, you give us nose to smell that if there was any burning, God, you would have taken us yes. out of danger. Yes. Yes. You give us ears this morning, mighty God, that you, we can hear each other. Oh, God, I just want to thank you this morning for our church family. Yes, I want to Lord. thank you this morning, Lord, God, that you woke us up and you have given us a gift. 
Oh God, you have given us the unction to function that we know that today at 1030, we ought to be in kingdom dominion, lifting up our hands, lifting up our hearts, lifting up our spirits to you, God, and say, Abba, Father, thank you. Jesus. We ask you this morning that you will take our services in charge. Oh God, from the moderator, God Almighty, to the songs that will be sung this morning, let there not be any scratching, any disruption. Oh God, when we are to be a mute, we will stay a mute. When we oh, when it's time for us to be unmuted, Lord, we will be unmuted. Oh God Almighty, help us, mighty God, to recognize that we are in service. We should not be walking up and down, but stay with God for the time that we're here with you, Daddy. Jesus. God Almighty, we do not take it for granted that we have Zoom. We do not take it for granted, Lord, that we ought to be making breakfast while we're in church. Because if we're in the physical building, we would not be doing that. Help us to be conscious, Lord. It is not easy, but help us to be conscious that we Jesus. are in service. Jesus. Ah, uh, God, we're one or two are gathered, Lord. Two or three, three or four, five or six, calling upon your Jesus. name, God. Let yes. us be serious. Oh, hallelujah. In times like this, Daddy Jesus, we need a Savior. In times like this, Lord, we need each other. In times like this, Lord, we need a togetherness. Help us, oh God, not to forget. Thank you this morning, Lord, for the words that are going to come forth from the speaker. We ask that, Daddy, that it will come from your throne room. Nothing, oh God, that come will be self, but it has been marinated, Lord God, and has been waiting to be cooked and for your people to feed, oh God, upon your words. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're here this morning, Lord, because we need a word from you. Hallelujah. Glory. We need a word from you this morning, Lord. Yesterday's word is not enough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need a word from you this morning, Lord. Oh, God, that will fatten our hearts. Oh, God, that will give us more vision. Oh, God, to focus. Oh, God, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit yes, has to say Lord. to the church. Mighty God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Many did not wake up this morning, but you woke us up. Ah, mighty God, how can we forget this gift that you have given unto us this morning? We're asking you for a little bit more grace. A little bit more grace this morning, mighty God. Jesus. Not our will, but thy will be done within our lives this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Praise God. Someone lift up the name of Jesus. This is another day that the Lord has made. Let us lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, we bless you. We bless your name. We bless you. We bless you. You are worthy, mighty God. You are worthy to be praised. We give God praise this morning because he's a good God. His love endureth forever and ever and i want us to join together as we sing our hymn this morning and bless the name of jesus because god has been good we thank him for the whole rugged cross hallelujah on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I still miss the old rugged cross till my throat at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and the change is someday for a crown on the old rugged cross 
so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to be with the dark Calvary. So I tear this old rugged cross till my throat is at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and the change is someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true It's sin and repose Gladly there Then he'll call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll stay Last I lay down, and I will cling to the old rugged cross, and the change is someday for a crown. And I will cling to the old rugged cross. Praise God, praise God, I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Bless the Lord. Are you happy for the old rugged cross today? Are you happy that God sent his son to the cross to die for us and to deliver us from our sins? Praise God if you are happy. That's good. Praise God because God has been merciful to us. God has been good to us. He has blessed us. He has delivered us. He has saved us. He has restored us. He has provided for us. We can go on and on and talk about the goodness of God. I wish somebody would just lift your hands and say, Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me, mighty God. We are still alive. We are still breathing. We are still saved. We are still in our right mind, church of God. We still have peace. We still have the joy of the Lord, which has given us strength from day to day. I don't know about you, but I am excited about God and what he's doing. I thank him for the old rugged cross. I thank him for Calvary. I thank him for the blood. I thank him for salvation. I thank him for my wife, for my children, for my extended family, for my friends. I thank him for everybody, Lord of mercy. I am thankful this morning. How many persons are thankful this morning? How many of us are thankful this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, somebody say, and all that he has done for me, my soul, hallelujah, cry out. My soul is crying out, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving hallelujah. me. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. I feel good. How many people feel good this morning? I feel good, good, good. I feel good, wonderful, good. That's what the songwriter said. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good. And if I don't stop calling his name this morning, we're not going to move any further because the name of Jesus is sweet. Somebody say, Jesus is sweet. Somebody say, my, my, my. My, 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 Lord is sweeter, sweeter than sugar.
sweeter than curry goat. Lord of mercy. He is sweet. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. It's sweeter than hockey and salt fish and fry down plate. Come on, church of God. I bless the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, and all my spirit. I will bless the Lord at all times, the psalmist says. Somebody bless the Lord with me just one more time, man. You're not tired of praising God. I hope you're not tired of lifting up your hands and say hallelujah. Some people don't have any hands. So you better lift them up and give God praise. Some, some people don't have mouth, but they can't talk. So you better lift up your mouth. Open your mouth and say praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We take so many things for granted, church of God. Ah, uh, you don't know what you have until you lose it. Uh, you don't want to lose your praise. Know that you have your praise. Give God a praise. There's coming a time, church of God, when it's going to be hard to praise God. It's going to be difficult. Uh, so we're going to have to rely on the praise that we have stored up for many years in our belly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can we read our scripture now? Our scripture is coming from um, the book of Psalm. Psalm 120, 121. We're going to read our scripture. And we're all going to read it together. But don't, don't unmute your mic. Because it's going to sound like a market. Coronation market. So. <laughs> we're all going to read out the, the scripture together. But keep your, keep your mics muted. So that we, um, we do not run over each other. Alright. Um, the scripture. Is coming to us from Psalm 121. Bless the Lord. Bless God. Psalm 121. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. Glory to God. From winds cometh my help. My help cometh. Verse 2 says, My help cometh from the Lord, which made what? Heaven and earth. Glory to God. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Glory to God. Our God is not asleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Glory to God. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall what? Preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve uh, thy soul. Verse 8 says, uh, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus and give him praise. Hallelujah. Because our Lord God shall preserve our going out. He shall preserve our coming in. He is our God and he promises never to leave nor forsake us. And so we give him all the glory. I, I hope you are ready to lift up your voice and just give God some praise this morning. Even before the music start, can we just give God a praise from our spirit, from our soul, from way down in our belly. Just lift up our voice. Just lift Lift up the name of Jesus. Just think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us. Ah, even before the music starts, just begin to praise God, man. Just think about all that God has brought us through. The storms and the fire and the hell and the high water. And, and how we could have lost our mind and we could have lost our children. Just give God praise. Don't wait till your battle is over, church of God. Begin to praise God. Now, whatever you have been praying God, pray, praying for, whatever you have been believing God for, let us lift up the name of Jesus and sing praises unto God. Hallelujah. Sing praises. Glory to God. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Our God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him. We understand. Come on, clap your hands up, everybody. Yeah. Oh, clap your hands and shout. All ye people. For he is to be praised, to be praised. 
sing praises unto God. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises unto God. Hallelujah. Praises unto God. Sing praises. Praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him. With understanding, clap your hands, clap your hands and shout, all ye people, for he, for he is to be praised, to be praised. Bubbly and icy praises, bubbly and icy praises, hallelujah. hallelujah. So when bubbly and icy praises, when bubbling your life, sing praises, hallelujah, for God is our King over all the earth, sing praises unto Him with understanding, so clap your hands and shout, all ye people, for He is to be praised, to be praised. Yes, sir. 
sing of a child. I will sing a child. When I declare. Oh, we 
Hallelujah. We glorify your name, Jesus. You are worthy of all the glory and all the praise. We magnify your name because of who you are and because of what you have done. Praise God. I want to ask uh, our youth director at this time to pray a special prayer for our youths and for our preacher for today. Our preacher will be Pastor Lloyd Francis. And we just want to ask God a special blessing upon our young people and upon our youths. Evangelist Denise Campbell, Minister Denise, I hope you're available. If you're not available, then we will ask one of our other leaders to lead us in prayer. But we want to pray a special prayer for our, 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 our preacher and for our young people at this time as we are in the spirit of worship right now. We're in a spirit of worship. Glory to God. Just, just take a moment. Just, just glorify God. Just worship him right where you are. Just magnify him right where you are. Glory to God. He deserves to be praised. He deserves to be exalted. He deserves to be glorified. Hallelujah. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we lift up the mighty name of Jesus right now. We give him praise. We give him glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We magnify your name, Lord. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Sister Curleen, are you available to pray for us this morning? Praise God. Sister Curleen. Bless God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Dennis is there, you know. I'm not hearing her. I'm not hearing her. She's, she's still muted. muted. She's still muted. Sister Denise, um, unmute yourself if you're still there, if you're going to pray. Praise God. All right, Sister Curly, we'll, we'll take up your, we'll, we'll give you a rain check for that. Praise God. Sister Denise, go ahead, Sister Praise. Denise. Father, we truly bow down this morning and worship you. We give honor and glory to your matchless name, knowing you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And as we gathered on this day, Lord, to give honor and glory to your name, we ask, Lord, that your presence will always be with us. God, we ask that you will let your kingdom come this morning and only thy will be done. We're nothing in your sight and in your presence. All our righteousness are as filthy rags before you this morning. But we bow down nonetheless, Lord, and give worship to you because you're Yahweh. Your name makes the difference in our lives. Your name brings about changes in our lives. And so we ask you this morning, Lord, that's as we're about to hear a word from your servant, that you, Lord, will unctionize him, that you, Lord, will allow him to feel a refreshing of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon him. I ask you this morning, God, for a double portion of strength, we don't know what the man of God might be going through at this time, but still has to carry the anointing and still have to carry the word. And so we ask you this morning for a double portion of strength, God, that you will touch him in his mindset and allow him, Lord, to focus on you. God, let your word bring peace to him as it brings peace to us. Father, we pray that you will speak to every one of us on this day. Lord, we lift up our young people before you. You know them by name and by nature. You know where they're located at this time. God, we were, we're missing out in the gathering because we recognize, Lord, that not many of our young people, oh God, are participating in the virtual worship. I ask you that you will visit them wherever they are and that you will touch them and that you will speak to their hearts. God, I pray that you will allow them to have an intimate encounter with you 
Oh, God, and when they have a personal encounter with you, Lord, it will give them that desire to seek your word and to be filled with your spirit. Well, this morning we ask for a covering. We ask for a covering over our pastor, our bishop, and their children. We ask, God, that you will touch hearts, touch minds, oh, God Almighty, and help us, Lord, to be strengthened in our inner man. Though the outward man perish, Lord, the Bible said, let the inner man be renewed daily. We ask you to renew them right now. God, we ask for the covering over Pastor Cliff and his family, over his children, oh God, over the church that you have allowed him, oh God, to be the shepherd. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that there will be unity among us and that the peace of God that passes all understanding will dwell among your sons and your daughter. Bless the word that comes to our hearts once again. And allow us, Lord Jesus, to rejoice like the scriptures say. And again, I say to you, rejoice. Amen. Have your way with us right now, we pray in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Praise God. We had a little technical difficulties. Some were having difficulty watching it on Facebook Live, but we should be back online now. Praise God, praise God. We had to do some troubleshooting there, but we're back online. And we hope that you can enjoy the rest of this worship. It's time for the word, church of God. And I hope you are ready for the word because the word is ready for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to uh, be ready to receive from the Lord. God has been good. And we are thankful for what God is doing and what he's going to continue to do. I just... Pray that, um, and I just want to take this opportunity to officially welcome every single one of us that are online today on Facebook Live, on Zoom, and those that are at home. I have my brother and his wife here, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Winlock Campbell, worshiping with us. Put your hands together for them, everybody. And we have Brother White all the way from Florida. Praise God. You saw him in praise and worship there on the drum. My God, that man makes that drum talk. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God was in the house and we could hardly stop. Praise God. He plays with an anointing. Glory to God. We thank God for Pastor Francis and his wife, uh, Mrs. Francis, and their son who is here worshiping with us as well. And my wife, Pastor Angela Campbell, and the family. We are all here worshiping God. The enemy can't stop us. Church of God. Anytime we get a chance to worship God, we're going to worship him wherever we are. And I just want to welcome you all. Thank you for your, uh, taking the time to worship with us here on Zoom, Facebook Live. The Lord bless you. And right now, I ask you to put your hands together and welcome our speaker, Pastor Francis, as he comes to minister to us. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Indeed, I am happy to be here in the house of God to lift up and praise and magnify the name of Jesus. Welcome to those who are also viewing on Facebook and those who are also viewing on uh, Zoom. Glad to have you here worshiping with us. It is a privilege to have you here. You know, um, God is good all the time. And all the time... God is good. Uh, today, today we're going to preach, uh, I'm going to share with you uh, a little message um, that the Lord laid on my heart. Um, it, I, I've been talking to you about two things, right? Um, I've been talking to you about a cup, right? A cup. We've been talking about a cup and a garbage bin. All right, so that's what the message is about today. A cup and a garbage bin. Okay, could you bow your heads in prayer and we'll see how these two things come into play. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your goodness and for your mercies. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless us, to anoint us, and let your word take full root in our lives as we give you thanks and praise. Lord, I pray that anything that is not into your honor nor to your glory, that you will destroy now in Jesus' name. Bring clarity and good understanding to your people 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, turn your Bibles with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. All right. Now, the first thing is this. I soon come back to the cup and the garbage bin. Okay. Um, the, 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 I'm, I'm not even going to give you the topic just yet because I want you to pay attention to the word a little bit longer. All right. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1, but the main emphasis is verse 20 and 21. But I'm just going to read a few verses. Verse 1, it says here, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. All right? Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, the first part of this particular scripture, it's a deep one. Because this one refers deeply to Paul, and Paul was in prison when he was preaching at the time. He wasn't really preaching, actually. It was just a letter. And he wrote to Timothy because there seemed to be some problems there, and he wanted to encourage him. So, the first thing he did was acknowledge that Timothy was son it's it's more than just uh, a casual relationship it's more than just um a pastor and a member relationship he wanted to establish something deeper than that he want him to know that he see him not as his subordinate he didn't see him as anybody less he didn't see him as somebody who was not worth his attention he saw him more than that, and he wanted Timothy to get that feeling that it's personal. All right? It's very personal. So he said to him, my son. Anytime you hear that word, my son, it refers to a father sharing with his child intimate information. All right? And this message today is very intimate from the Lord and personal to you. So as you listen to it, take it that God is speaking specifically to you. So he said to him, therefore, right? Right here it says, thou therefore, my son, be strong. All right. Now, 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 now when you hear the word be strong, 25 times, 25 times, Paul told Timothy to be strong. It's strange that you would tell him to be strong because at that time when he was talking to him, he was in prison. You'd have thought that instead he would be saying to him, listen, come and visit me. I need support. I need new fresh clothing. I need some food. I need somebody to be there for me while I'm going through my rough time. You would think that he would be saying to him, hey, come on, my son. Come on, man. Bring the church. Sing to me. Encourage me because I'm in deep despair. No. In a situation like this, Paul was given a word of encouragement. And he said to him, hey, Timothy, my son, it is personal. It is intimate. Be thou strong. That strength doesn't refer to physical strength. He's not saying to him, go and eat your vegetables and your vitamins and make sure that you go to the weight gym and you lift up weights and be strong because you have to be strong physically. He wasn't referring to him like that. He wasn't telling him to be strong in that way. Neither was he telling him to have a doctrinal strength. You know, sometimes we boast in the church about having a doctrinal strength. How our church is a better church than any other church. And we go to great length to argue philosophically. To tell people what day you should serve God on. What day you shouldn't. What day you should baptize and what you shouldn't baptize in. And what you should eat or not eat or some other thing. We go to such great doctrinal proof. And we take out the scripture and we roll it off and we say this scripture says that and it connects to that other scripture and it backs up by this Old Testament which is revealed again in the New Testament. He's not saying to him, I want you to be doctrinally strong. No. 
So he didn't want him to be physically strong. He didn't want him to be doctrinally strong. Then how did he want him to be strong? He says here, that is in Christ Jesus. Strong in the grace. The grace that is in Christ Jesus. Why that is so important? Because the grace of Jesus referred to the love of Jesus. It refers to the forgiveness of Jesus. It refers to the kindness and the sacrifice that Jesus spent his life on the cross. And he died for us. That is the grace in which he is referring to. And that is the strength in which he is talking about. So here he says to him, Timothy, even though I'm in prison, I want you to be strong in the grace of Almighty God. What is lacking many times in our churches, in our people, is grace. We are so intolerant of each other. We are so impatient with each other. And we are quick to judge and to rebuke and to demand that if people don't follow exactly as we say that they should they are written out out of the church you're dismissed immediately or they're told listen they are not worthy anymore that is not the strength that he requires he requires him to be strong in god's grace to love to forgive to share to care, to extend kindness. This, this same grace of Jesus that was different, that caused even those who felt the woman who was a prostitute to find favor in God's eye. Several prostitutes had that same experience. One of them, she even went and she cried and she wept and her tears was used to wash his feet. And then she took out all that she had in the alabasco oil and anoint him. And after she anoint him, she used her hair and dry his feet. That same woman who was doing it, who was a prostitute, Others turned and said, Jesus, if you knew who that woman is, you'd not even let her touch you. But Jesus rebuked them and said, allow this woman to go. Feel free to do what she wants to do. For she worshipped me with her heart. This is a type of love that Christ expects us as believers to demonstrate. This is the kind of virtue he expects us to display. A strength that, that is, is beyond, beyond what you think, think it is. A strength beyond, beyond doctrine. A strength, a strength beyond, beyond what, 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 what we redeem or deem as religious, religious righteousness. righteousness. A, a strength that is deep that, that is confusing to others that have mercy. mercy. When everyone else says, says to be condemned, be strong, my, my son. son. Show mercy. Show, show the love of the way. Show him. And in the church, be, be strong. strong. Secondly, he says, he says in, in verse, verse 3, Thou therefore, therefore endure hardship as a good soldier of, of Jesus Christ. And so, and so here we go again talking, talking about soldier and enduring hardship. No, 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 I've never been a military man. I've never, I've never had that experience. So I, so I can't speak deeply on that part. But what, what I, I do share is that, that here, here it is. I know, I know that, that soldiers have to make sacrifices. And what, and what quickly comes to mind is war and, and battle. Because, because they have to go, go into war. And they have, have to fight. fight. So, they so they make sacrifices. Yes, yes I understand, understand that. But even more so, they have to make a sacrifice that many of us don't really realize unless you are part of that family. And I am a part of a family that has children that goes off to war. The sacrifice that that soldier has to bear 
is giving up family and friends and their own home. Here it is, Paul is saying to Timothy, be thou what? A good soldier. You have to make sacrifices. And some of these sacrifices mean that your family or your friends will not see eye to eye where God is taking you. But nevertheless, you have to soldier on. It's easy to say. We can make sacrifices when it involves not sinning, when it involves not smoking or drinking or cursing. It's easy to say that, but it's a not next thing to say that we have to remain soldiers when your loved ones are telling you to do something that is contrary to where God is taking you. Have to endure hardship. The next thing that they have to endure too, it says here, they don't involve in civilians' affair. Huh? That's what it says here. It says, verse 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. So if a soldier is going out there, and if a soldier is actually involved in a warfare, he has no time to be thinking about socialization. He has no time to be thinking about group meetings. He has no time to be thinking about community watch in his neighborhood. <laughs> He has no time to be thinking about, oh, well, I need to go to work nine to five. Because his independence is taken away and he is totally committed to the army. Matthew 16 verse 24 express that same thing. You have to give up your independence. As a soldier, you have to give it, give in completely to the task. It's not a half and on and off sort of approach. No, you have to give in 100%. So therefore, because he loses his independence, he has no time for these little social activities, social events. Now you might say, oh, oh, so what does that mean? It means that if I'm going to be a good Christian, it means that I can't socialize. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you're not supposed to socialize. I'm not saying that you're not supposed to greet others or have friends or go to work. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is the principle of it all is explained in verses 11 to 13. Let me explain it some more. Verse 11 to 13. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That's the bottom line. That is what it is referring to being a good soldier. We have to take up that seriousness. That guess what happened? We are determined that if he dies, huh, we'll die with him. For if we be dead with him, we shall also what? Live with him. It's a principle that is different from what we are thinking about. It's a principle that specifically states that all that we are doing is dedicating our time on our life to the Lord. So even as we walk around and have friends and have socialization, our behavior pattern is different. From the norm. If we suffer, we also shall reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. 
And here is what it says. If we believe not, he abideth faithful, for he cannot deny himself. So here it is, it's speaking even furthermore. Believers talking to us and say, hey, as a good soldier, you're going to make sure that whatever you do, it's in line with God. Whatever you say, whatever you aspire to, God is pleased with you. Now, I know earlier on I lift up a cup and a garbage bin and I said I'll be preaching about that and so far you haven't heard anything about it. But all that I've shared with you is important and you're going to see it now. In verse 20, this is what Paul says. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth and some of honor and some to dishonor. All right. So, so, so here it is. This vessel, a cup, is used for drinking. You would never ever use this cup to do something else other than drinking. You won't throw garbage in there. Right? You're not supposed to. You won't, you, you won't use it to put any other, you know, put dirt or anything like that. Instead, you will keep this for it's a vessel used for drinking. However, this vessel is a garbage bin. And you will never use this garbage bin to drink juice. I will never see somebody say, all right, okay, you know what I want you to do? Mix a good big bin of juice. I'm so thirsty, I need it. That's the last thing you're gonna do. Because this vessel, even though it is used in the house, it's a vessel of dishonor. What I'm trying to bring forth to you is this. Here is the truth of what the word of God is now saying. There are two sets of people in Christendom. And both have their roles to play. All right? You have vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. You will not find a house without a garbage bin. Because the garbage bin serves its purpose. Likewise, if you see a home, it will have utensils or vessels for drinking, for eating, for healthy consumption of meals. It is important. It is important in the whole sphere of God. And that's what Paul was now saying to him, Timothy. That is why when he spoke to Timothy in the first verse, and he said to him, when you minister, huh, make sure that you do so. Let me read it again for you. All right. He says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 1. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He told him to be strong in the grace of Christ Jesus because in the whole sphere, in the whole kingdom of God, you will find people of honor and people of dishonor. If you go to a home and that home has a bed in there, has a lovely living room, have dining room, it has all the amenities that makes it look beautiful, but it has no bathroom, no shower. I encourage you to run because that home is not complete. It means that you'll have to leave out of your house to use the bathroom or to get a shower. You have to have those things in place for it is important. 
in Christendom. Because you have those two sets, it's important that Timothy, when he was ministering, consider that. Now, therefore, come into the meat of the message. Believers, I now speak to your spirit right now. Remember that Christ expects you to honor everyone. Whether they be honor, vessels of honor or dishonor. Because everyone has its purpose. Now, it, now you might be saying, but okay, what is a vessel of dishonor? What really is it? We know the vessel of honor. The one that is fit for the master's use. The one that the master takes joy. He has friends come out. He puts out the cup. He says, go ahead, drink it. Taste this fine wine. He can pour his wine into it because he trusts the cup. Likewise, you have people in Christendom that God can trust you. Can God trust you? Can God trust you with his wine? Can he trust you with his word? Can he trust you to be a blessing to others? Can he trust you to keep the fire of the Holy Spirit alive? Can he trust you that you won't take his holy words and twist it to something negative? Here it is. He now speaks and he says, there is a vessel of honor and a vessel of dishonor. What is then? It's a vessel of dishonor. Verse 16 to 18 speaks clearly about that. Verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings. The first thing a dishonored vessel does is enjoy vain arguments for they will increase what unto more ungodliness let me tell you something when satan wants to take you from being a vessel of honor to a vessel of garbage dishonor what he introduced you to is a lot of waste time. You hear me? Waste time. Waste time in arguments. Waste time in discussion. Waste time in religious arguments that don't lead nowhere. Why? Because the more he can get you involved in wastage, is the better for him. What does that mean? It means that, like, for example, let us say you have a cup, right? And then you cook some, you cook some fried chicken, eh? And the oil is there. You want to throw the oil, but oil is hot. So instead of throwing it in the garbage bin, you find a cup. And you throw the oil in there. You don't want to drink the oil. But it's wastage being poured inside that cup. Now, if that cup remains there, it attracts ants, it attracts roach, it attracts flies in there. And soon after, that same oil that you could have put out back into a frying pan and fried more chicken, you can't use that oil anymore because inside of it is filled with all sorts of insects that makes it even more impure. The vain babblings said what what? Will lead to more ungodliness. And so your vessel, which is supposed to be a vessel of honor, stands to the sideline carrying it oil that was used and have no more purpose. Satan wants to throw oil in us. And tell us we need to keep it. No, we might use it later on. So therefore you find yourself in arguments or discussions that don't benefit you nor the person. But it's heated. It's hot. You say, yes, yes, yes. I, you know, this is the right way. And I believe this way. And so you argue so long for hours. And then you carry inside of you the residue of that argument that has no purpose.
eventually, by constantly pouring hot oil into this cup, eventually the heat will start to deform it. <coughs> eventually, it's going to move from the place where you offer this drink, <coughs> sorry, to people. And then now you start to put it in the lower cupboards. Because guess what happened? It's not a cup that you'll use often. Soon after, you go and you're eating something, you know, chicken. And then, you know, you want something to throw garbage in. Or you're eating popcorn. And you know that little thing that gets in the mouth you want it. And then soon after, you just look and just grab it up in the... And put it down. Because now it has moved from a vessel of honor. Gradually slipping to the place of dishonor. Here it is, he moves on. He says here, what is he saying here? In verse 17. And their word will not eat, right? As doth a can, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hanius and Phileus. Verse 18. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrew the faith of some. Here it is that he's saying. Thank you. Here it is that he's saying that eventually it begins to become a vessel of dishonor, a garbage bin. Something that doesn't have honor anymore. Because practice of those things lead it down that way. Believers, that is why you can know those people whom God will use in church and those people whom God just won't use. The Bible said, many are called, but few are chosen. And what happened here? <clears throat> you have some people who come into church with the good intention of serving God. But they get so caught up in arguments, in rumors, in all sorts of different thinking that before long, instead of trying to grow spiritually, they are nothing but just garbage bins in the church. What then is the purpose of the garbage bin? The garbage bin is useful for when you want to get rid of certain things. <clears throat> How does it work? It, th those people are perfect when you have a debate. Huh? You have fun and you want to have a debate? Don't choose somebody who is serious about God. Choose somebody who, you know, love to talk. And you can put them there and they will serve their purpose beautifully. They will argue the point because they want to win the point. People who don't care much but they want to be a part of the church are very good people to have around. Yes. Because those people don't do anything else but just quickly do little things around. And that's fine. I'm not saying that a genuine Christian won't run around and do stuff in the church. But these people will stay. It's not a surety that they will be selected when it is time for the rapture. But they are there. My question is this. What vessel are you? Because here it is. He says here in the word. Verse 21 here. If a man therefore purge himself from these. These what? Vain babbling. These what? The gossip. The problems that occur. If he will purge himself from these. He shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good works. Believers, I encourage you to take a check on where you stand. The question is, are you a vessel of honor or you a vessel of dishonor? Are you a cop or are you a garbage bin? Don't encourage people to come and tie up your time with useless arguments. 
Don't encourage people to waste your time in trying to figure out if there's a God or not a God. Let me tell you something what happened. When you have arguments like those, I have seen young people and older folks too who are serving God and they get involved in these arguments, get involved in things that draw them away from the Lord. And guess what happened? Eventually, they themselves start to question whether or not God is real. They start to question whether or not they should be serving God. They start to question whether or not if Jesus is Lord or if there's some other Lord. The questions start to come about because Satan now have taken root in their lives and start to make them a vessel of dishonor. Believers, I want to encourage you today. Pastors spoke about it. Bishop spoke about it. Worship God. Praise him. Give him thanks. A good soldier focuses on worshiping and praising and giving God thanks. A good soldier focusing on lifting up the name of Jesus and magnifying him and glorifying him. A good soldier has a different approach to life than one who has no intention of going anywhere. And that is the key thing. Believers, today, let us determine in our spirits to be good soldiers. Verse 19, and then I'm going to close. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this vessel or this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. God is saying, hey, listen, he knows exactly who he is. He knows exactly who is important to him. He knows exactly those who are calling on his name. Believers, I encourage you today. I know, I know, I know. You look at it and you say, boy, Lord, there's so many things that I need to get done. There's so many things I want to achieve in this life. There's so many things I need to deal with in my life. I encourage you first and foremost, remember you are a soldier of the Lord. That is number one. Two, remember that God is expecting you to make sacrifices for him. Yes, you might be feeling that you need to do 10 different things. But before you go to bed at night, talk to Jesus. Sometimes before you make decisions to go ahead with certain business transaction, talk to him. Sometimes when I'm faced with certain difficulties, you know, uh, to be honest with you, sometimes when I see trees and they're so big and I have to go up there to cut them, I call my group together and say, let us pray. I don't care if they are Christian, yes or no. I said, let us pray. And we pray and then we attack the tree. And in every situation, God has been faithful. And yes, there are times when people will come to me and ready to give a good hearty argument as to why their religion is better or why they think this is better or that is better. You know what happened? I just let them talk and after they're finished, I say to them, well, that's your opinion. Praise be to God. And I move on because I realize that is not going to make me go to heaven. What is going to make me go to heaven? Being someone who dedicate their life to serving God, enduring hardship, trusting God, believing God, read his words, pray fast and seek God. Satan will tie you up during this time. And I'm warning you, Satan will tie you up in wasting a lot of time arguing about things. One of the many things that Satan loved to say, well, if God care about us so much, why is it there's so much plague and pestilence? I don't have time to answer that. They will tell you, oh, if God is really real, then why is he make COVID all over the world? I don't have time to waste with that. What is important is that I remain faithful to God. Believers, be a vessel of honor. And don't allow yourself to be a vessel of dishonor. Could you bow your heads 
and pray with me. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that everyone who have heard the word of God will trust you, will depend on you, and God instead learn to grow step by step in you. God, I pray, oh God, that they'll be vessels of honor, that they will live up to your expectation and not turn to the side, to the right or to the left, listening to gossips or getting involved in rumors or arguments or anything that does not lift up or magnify the name of Jesus. Your word specifically states, God, that if we purge ourselves from these things, God, we will be vessels of honor. So now, God, I pray right now that you have your way. Touch your people. Bless them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. And I'll turn over back to Bishop. Bishop. Praise God, praise God. Thank God for that beautiful word from the man of God. I choose to be a vessel of honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I choose to be a vessel of honor. I choose to serve God. I choose to present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. I, I, I choose to be set apart. A vessel of honor is set apart to be used for a special purpose and I choose to be set apart to be used by the Holy Spirit to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for that word. We are going to worship God in giving at this time. Praise God. And we're going to ask Sister Curly to pray a special prayer. A special prayer at this time. We know we're going through a hard time at this time. We're going through a pandemic. And we know people are going through hardship. People are going through trying times. Uh, some people have lost their jobs. Some people have lost time you know they're not getting the full amount of time they usually get at work because companies are going through a lot of hardship and so uh, we want to pray a special prayer for those who are going through difficulty we want to pray a special prayer for those who are sick and for those who are going through hardship we greatly appreciate your generous donations even during these hard times we appreciate your sacrifice uh, your support helps to further our mission to spread this gospel globally um, as you can see on your screen you may give your donations using one of the methods uh, you can go online to www.kdcog.com you can use Zelle and just put in Kingdom Dominion or our email address info at kdcog.com you can also use cash app and just put in dollar past the cliff and you'll see our information coming up and if you want to go the old-fashioned way, just mail the check or, or the cash or whatever. If you want to mail your card, whatever you want to do um, to give on to the Lord. Um, just, you know, if you, want to, if you want to send a car to the address, send it. Hallelujah. Praise God. If, if, if you want to send the title for your house, come on. If that's what the Lord asks you to do, just do as the Lord say. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's no limit to what God may ask you to do, and you must be obedient to the voice of the Lord because you cannot outgive God. I challenge you. You cannot outgive God. He said He will open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing on you that you will not have room to receive. And I have proven God to be a true and faithful to His word. Our, our mailing address is 96 Pleasant Hill Road. Conyers, Georgia, 30012, as you see on your screen. So we're going to ask Sister Curling to pray a special prayer for all those who are going through, for the givers, givers for those who um, you know, are struggling, for those who are making the sacrifice. Just pray for everybody that God will pour out his blessing upon us and, and honor God will honor his word. Go ahead, Sister Curling. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Father, we come before you today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we're thankful, we're grateful, Lord, for all that you have provided for us. Yes, Jesus. Heavenly Father God, we're thankful for the many blessings, for the tender mercies. Yes, Lord. Oh God, I pray, dear God, that you will touch the weak, the weary, mm. the ones who are hungry, dear God. Yes, God. Lord God, I'm asking you this morning that you'll make provisions for the ones who don't have to give. Lord God, I'm asking you that you will help us, Lord God, mm. as fellow brothers and sisters, that we will stand in the gap, Lord yes, Jesus. Jesus. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, that whatever it is that they are 
in need of, Father, that yes. you will help us. You will speak through us who can help, Lord. And you will help us, Lord Jesus, to help them, Lord. Lord God, this morning I'm asking you to bless the hands that have to give, Lord God. Yes, oh Jesus. God, I ask bless you, Lord people. Jesus, to bless the hands mm. that don't want to give, Lord. Yes, I bless pray, God, Lord. that bless you will Lord. send special blessings their yes, way, Jesus. Lord. Yes, Jesus. Father God, guide them and protect them. Yes, I pray, Lord. Father, that you'll make provision for this ministry, dear God. Yes, Lord. That whatever that we put our hands on, Lord mm. Jesus, that there will be success, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you will cover us with your blood, Lord yes, God. Lord, Guide us. us and protect us as I say thanks in Jesus' name. Lord God, as I ask that you will bless the offering, the tithe, yes, Lord yes, God, Jesus. that each and every one of us has sent, Lord. Yes, God. Help us, God, to use it for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. Yes, Jesus. Grant us this day's blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I've got my mind made up. And there is no turning back for me. I'll be a vessel of honor unto the Almighty God. I will serve him until I die. For God I live, for God I die. And I won't turn back. For I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up. And I won't turn back because I have want to see my Jesus someday. One more time. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I have want to see my Jesus someday. Everybody. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I have want to see my Jesus Someday, goodbye world, goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasure, I stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Everybody, help me say goodbye world. I'll yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Born, 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 born again. Thank God I'm born again. Everybody say, born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Come again, say, born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Let me say, born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. I say, born of water, spirit, and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. Yes, sir. Born of the water, spirit, and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. Born of the water, spirit, and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. All of the water, spirit, and the sun. Thank God I'm born again. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Is your mind made up today to serve God? And I won't, I won't turn back. I want to see my Jesus. Someday. I am under the rock. Somebody say I am under the rock. The rock is higher than I. Jehovah hide me. I am under the rock. Yes, sir. Go tell my enemies. I am under the rock. Yeah. Jehovah hide me. I am under the rock. His name is Jesus. Name so sweet, Emmanuel name so Jesus name so sweet, Emmanuel name so sweet, Jesus name so sweet, Emmanuel His name is so sweet, Jesus name so sweet, Emmanuel. Everyone, come on, everyone, they rock upon Jesus.
Jesus, 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 Jes